What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the Accord and what problem I currently have with it. Um, so I mentioned to you guys a while ago that the Accord has been parked. It's been parked now for about two weeks and that's because of a problem that I have with my timing chain. So I have a check engine light and the problem with the car is that the, the timing chain itself is stretched. What the timing chain is, is it's a piece that connects both the intake sprocket, the exhaust sprocket, and the crankshaft sprocket all together. Now, Keeping them all together is one part of it, but keeping them all in the exact same spot is what is important for this thing. So each one of those cogs isn't exactly where it's supposed to be. Because it's slightly stretched, um, what's gonna happen is that one of these cams or even the crankshaft is gonna be slightly turned in a wrong way. Now, if it gets to be turned too much, what could actually happen is you could make uh, contact with the valves to the pistons. And that means your engine's shot and you gotta rebuild the whole thing. So I have a check engine light and it just means that, careful, the timing chain is stretched, replace it. And because of that, I have to get this fixed, I have to do this entire procedure, and then after that, I can get this car done with an E-test and then I can start driving it again. So because I needed an emissions test at the end of March, um, it's been parked since then. And of course this problem only happened basically right then. Um, but it doesn't matter, I've got everything apart and I'm not exactly gonna show you what uh, the entire job um, entails, but I'm gonna show you what I've done, I'm gonna show you what needs to be done, um, and if you guys wanna get this process done, hopefully this little tutorial will help. It's not gonna be super in-depth, but I'm at least gonna show you the parts that are there, the parts that go wrong, and the parts that I have to replace those broken pieces. So, without further ado, Let's go take a look at the engine. So we're gonna take a look at the Accord's engine bay right now. So you can see that we have everything on the top of the motor all disconnected and removed. So you can see that we have access uh, to both of our intake and exhaust camshaft sprockets. We can see that we have no timing chain or the guides down in the engine, and that's because I removed it all. So if we take a look at the sprockets themselves, we can see that the one for the exhaust um, looks really nice and shiny. That's because that's a brand new one on and I just installed that. Now for the intake, that right there is what is called the VTC actuator. And that is what is actually um, a huge problem for these K24 motors. So it doesn't matter if you have a Civic SI, doesn't matter if you have an Accord, doesn't matter if you have a Civic. If you've got a K-series motor, um, those VTC actuators, those things go to crap. So that's why I have a replacement one uh, somewhere. I've got to replace one, I, I promise you guys that. I've got a new one that's gonna be going in there and it's gonna be replacing that one right there. I've got a new bolt to replace that too. Um, now something that I found kind of interesting, um, when I was working on my mini motor, I found out that the bolts that connect um, the sprockets up to the camshafts and also for the crankshaft down below, those were all torqued to yield bolts. For this thing, um, it, that's, they're not torqued to yield bolts, they're just regular bolts that you tighten up and then they're done and over with. Um, so you can, if you want, reuse these exact bolts for your engine. So this here is our new uh, VTC actuator and this is what's actually gonna be replacing the stock one that's on there. So when these things go bad, you're gonna hear a really bad like grinding noise whenever you start up your car. It's kind of strange. My car doesn't necessarily do it, um, which is kind of surprising for a car that's got 200,000 kilometers on it, but um, I'm gonna replace it while I'm here anyways. So I'm gonna be replacing the timing chain that connects everything together. I've got new guides. So all of these over here are all gonna be going into the engine. So there's the new chain, guide one, there's our new bolt, another guide, another guide, and this right here is the main part of it. This is our automatic tensioner. So this is what is gonna be making uh, constant pressure um, for the chain onto the actual sprockets themselves and it's gonna keep everything timed. So I disconnected everything yesterday. I got a decent amount done. I had a friend help me too, so that made it a little bit easier. Um, but today I'm gonna be just reinstalling everything. So if you guys wanna do this procedure, the top has to come off, so the valve cover needs to come off. The side cover, which is the timing the timing case cover needs to come off. Uh, that's it right there. I clean that up and put a little coat of paint on it. Looks really sweet. Um, everything else down here, um, you need room. So we also had to move the power steering pump. All we did was disconnect it. There's two bolts that connect up, one there and one there. Take those out, set them aside. Uh, the reservoir needed to be moved out of the way. The AC line needed to be moved out of the way. The wiring harness that leads to each one of the spark plugs and the coil packs, that needed to be moved so we could take the, the valve cover off. And that's pretty much where we're at now. 
Now, to be honest, the most difficult part of this is removing this bolt. Now, for the intake I'm talking about, the exhaust is a little bit easier because the bolt itself is smaller and there's not the same amount of torque holding this guy onto the camshaft as there is for the VTC actuator onto the camshaft. So for this one right here, what I had to do is I grabbed a pretty long um, wrench right here and a breaker bar with a 17 millimeter socket on the end of it and I just cracked it loose. It, you know, it took a while. I was kind of getting discouraged by it, but um, I muscled it out and I was more persistent than that bolt. So I was able to get that thing out and we we're going to be just replacing um, everything else at that point. So let's stay tuned. So with the bolt loosened up, I was able to pull the old VTC actuator off of the cam and then slide the new one back onto the intake camshaft. Now if you purchase the new VTC actuator from the place that I bought mine from, uh, you guys can find the link in the description box, it will come with a brand new bolt that you guys can use to install here. Thread it into the intake cam and then break out your torque wrench and a 17mm socket. Tightening it will be a two-handed job as you'll need a 15 16 wrench um, to hold the camshaft in place while you use your torque wrench with your other hand. The torque spec for the VTC actuator mounting bolt is 83 foot-pounds, where the exhaust sprocket mounting bolt is a bit less, coming in at 53 foot-pounds. Now after I torqued them both out to spec, I then was able to install the timing chain with the two gold links on top of both of the sprockets for the camshafts. So I have both the top parts right here for the timing chain attached to both of the sprockets. So if you can see up top, there's, a, there's gonna be a, uh, two gold links. One of them that's gonna be uh, for the intake sprocket and then two more gold ones found for the exhaust sprocket. So there's going to be two little dots found on the top of each of the cogs. Now you're gonna wanna put uh, those chains in between them. So you can see there's a little dot at the top. You have to put it in between both of those two gold ch uh, chains. And once you do that, that means that both of the intake cams are gonna be timed together. Once you have that done, you can attach the crankshaft sprocket down there, line it up over top of the crankshaft down in the center of the screen, and then after that you can start installing each one of your guides. If you guys do wanna replace your timing chain, whether you have a K24 or even a K20 for that matter, um, timing it is going to be the same pretty much way. So you see that little dot found on the top of the sprocket? So on a K24, you're gonna to have to put that in between both of those gold links found at the top. You're gonna to have the front one there for the intake camshaft, and you're gonna have the same thing there for the exhaust sprocket. So once you have both of those lined up, the top parts of the engine are going to be timed. Now you wanna make sure that the engine on the bottom end is gonna be in the same way. So we're gonna make sure that the crankshaft is in that same kind of style. Now it's not in the exact same kind of way, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. So. On the bottom, if we take a look at the crankshaft sprocket, we're gonna have another gold chain. Now let me first turn the light down a little bit. So you can see, one sec, there's first a little spacer over top. This you have to take off. It's legit just a little, let's call it a, a spacer or an O-ring. So that has to come out, and then once that's out, on the bottom, there's only going to be one gold sprocket, one little tooth down there. So that is actually going to have to go on top of the little dot. Now you can't really see it when the chain is on, but if you go ahead and turn the engine a little bit with a wrench, if you turn it, uh, you don't need to turn it much. You just wanna turn it a little bit so you can actually see what's going on at the back. You can play around with the intake and the exhaust cams, turn them a little bit and you should have it moved enough so you can see what's going on. So with the engine slightly turned, we can see that we've got that same little gold tooth up top, but on the top part of the actual sprocket for the crankshaft, there's going to be a little dot found on the sprocket. So can you guys see that weird little dot? There, there's a little dot, and that has to go in between the gold link. So on top of it, there was two, and it has to go in between them. On this one here for the crankshaft, this is the same thing for the K24 and K20. You're gonna have that style right there where that little dot has to go in between both of those um, little links. So it has to go directly over top of that link right there. Now if you have VTEC on the intake and exhaust cams, you're gonna have that big VTC actuator um, on the front and for the back. But considering I only have VTEC for my intake, I have a style that looks like this. So you can see the valve train up top is a little bit more complicated for the VTEC side versus the exhaust side. It's a lot more simple. It's a lot simpler, looks like this. So if you guys are doing this process, hopefully this video has helped you guys out a little bit. Um, once you've got this pretty much done, 
and you have our tensioner, our automatic tensioner down there attached along with the guides, everything should be pretty much good to go. It's just a matter of reinstalling everything in the reverse order and using a little bit of Honda Bond wherever that's needed. So the Honda Bond is basically gasket maker and it goes between all of the mating surfaces. So the valve cover, um, that's found up top. That's the only thing that doesn't get the Honda Bond on there. However, there's going to be the Honda Bond found on the entire uh, timing chain cover, and that goes and covers the entire front side of the engine. That is this piece over here. So what we're basically gonna be doing is applying a little bit of this stuff around the entire perimeter in here, on these parts right there, all this, and we wanna coat everything pretty good so that we're not gonna have any leaks once we install this back on the engine. This timing chain case needs to be sealed up to the engine block so that the oil that circulates in the engine doesn't leak out. To get that done, you can use any kind of gasket maker. Honda has two specific gasket makers that they use on everything, and they make it so that there's no need for any kind of gasket kit. All that you need to do is apply this Honda Bond to the outside perimeter of the component that you're installing, and it will seal it up and then resist it against water, oil, and many other chemicals. I might have used a little bit too much force trying to squeeze out the gasket maker, because instead of oozing out the nozzle as it should, the tube decided it was going to make a shortcut and burst out the back. Anyways, just apply a generous amount, and when you install the bolts that surround the casing, it will level out and make a perfect seal. When installing the timing chain cover, be careful not to hit any components like the timing chain or any of the other accessory pulleys because you'll get the Honda Bond on them. Now if you have another person to help you out here, that would be awesome because you can lower it into the engine bay while the other person is in the wheel well and then guides it over top of the crankshaft. Now when you're doing this process, don't take your time with installing it because the gasket maker will start to dry as soon as it's applied, so be sure to go ahead and install it and then tighten up each one of those bolts. Now all the bolts on the side of the engine should be tightened up and torque to nine foot pounds of torque. So with the engine now in this state, we pretty much are completely done. So we have the entire timing chain done. We've got our VTC actuator installed. We have everything now on the front side of the engine now completely refreshed. So we also have the timing chain cover. Uh, that's all bolted on there. We've got this bracket here that mounts to the motor mount to the engine. That's installed. Everything's torqued up. So what we have to do next is reinstall the power steering pump, the valve cover, the spark plugs, the coil pack, and anything else that just sits over top of the engine. The hard part is now done. So if you guys want to get this project done, or if you guys do have to do a timing chain uh, service to your car, it's not that difficult. After you have the parts, it's just a matter of taking your time, not being in a rush, and you can get this done in a matter of a day, two at most. So the Accord is all back together. Now the parts that we took out of the engine and replaced them with new ones are all found right here. So we've got the tensioner, the automatic tensioner, we've got the guides, both for the left side, the right side, and the top. We've got both cogs, we've got the exhaust cog, and we have the VTC actuator, which is the basically the same thing as the intake cog. This controls your VTEC. All of this was replaced, and I actually compared the length and size of the chain before I put the new one in, and this one seemed to be about two, uh, links too long. So it's stretched that much even though there's the exact same amount of links on the chain. So with that all being said and uh, you know basically everything all being done, this is what we have and we're going to turn on the car and hopefully if we did everything right, um, the engine should turn over fine and our code will eventually go away. So one of two things is going to happen. Either the engine is going to break or the engine is going to run perfectly fine. Hopefully it's the latter. So I've got the key, we're gonna turn the car on. Fingers crossed, everything works good. So instead of it turning out to be horribly bad, it turned out to be quite good. Car started up really good. Now, at this point, it's just a matter of making sure nothing's leaking, making sure everything runs properly, and everything at this point is done. Now, after I took the car for a drive, the check engine light turned off, and everything is running great. Now, the one thing that I also noticed is because the timing chain was stretched, after I installed the new one, the car not only ran better, it's more fuel efficient, and it's also a little bit more powerful. Now, after this point, it's just a matter of cleaning everything up and putting everything away. 
So if you guys do want to get this job done, if you guys want to do the same kind of thing to your car, it's not necessarily that difficult. It might be a little overwhelming and maybe a little bit scary at first if you've never uh, touched the internals of an engine before, but you don't really get too much into it. All that you're really doing is taking off covers and working on just stuff that's on the outside or basically slightly on the inside of it. Um, this is all the stuff that we used right here. We just took out simple stuff. Um, there's no real catches to anything. The only difficult part maybe um, would be timing the engine and getting that done right. But I mean, other than that, it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, it wasn't that difficult. I got this done in about a day and a half after just doing this myself. Um, I did have a friend to help me um, a little bit, but I also had to use the camera. So if you guys want to get this done, it'll probably take you even less time because you don't have to show someone what you're doing. Um, but what this means now is that I can finish working on the Mini, get working on that, finish porting the head, and I'll actually show you a little bit of what I've done to that thing so far um, so you guys have an idea as to what's going on. So the Mini's head looks something like this. So I've already gotten a decent amount of work done to this. A lot of the imperfections are removed. However, I'm still gonna go a little bit further and refine these even more. So this still looks amazing compared to what it used to look like. Now you can still see there's some imperfections, or is that dirt down there? That's dirt, that's a little bit of uh, residue. Um, but it looks unbelievable right now. So this is already after I removed a lot of the surface imperfections. Now if you guys wanna see the video of me actually porting and polishing this thing, stay tuned because I still have a lot of work to do. I am in the process of still working on this. However, once it's done, it's gonna be unbelievable. Uh, the process differs from car to car, so if you wanna see more information, stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed, and when I have that video out, you guys will be notified. So stay tuned for this. If you guys aren't subscribed, definitely do it. But if you guys are interested in picking up any of the stuff that I use today, you guys can find this exact same timing kit that I bought for my Accord. Um, you guys can find this all on Amazon. I have links in the description box. So if you guys wanna pick up either the tools, the products, or anything else that you saw in this video, you guys can find that all down there. I've got links directing you to Amazon to help you guys out. So if you guys wanna pick all this stuff up, it's literally just buying it with one click and then it's gonna be shipped right to your door. If you guys have any questions regarding the tools, the torque specs, or whatever, throw them down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to help. Again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.